There is a lot of demand for it. So in this video, finally the presentation of the construction drawings for the tiny tabletop bandsaw. Once again, Thomas Kemmerer has done a great job completely free of charge. Based on his excellent model and drawings, anyone with the right skills and tools should be able to rebuild the machine. There are people who have already rebuilt the machine based on the videos, such as John Wright from the UK. Visit his channel to see his approach to the build and an alternative to the motor and speed control. And I have to say, it has become a very useful machine. Whether it is a matter of quickly sawing a sheet of aluminium to size, or neatly sawing a large angle iron, it all works fine. And even a large block of steel of 60 by 60 millimeters is neatly sawn to size by this small, precise and powerful machine. I think the most important tip for this build is that before you start, you really need to buy a suitable motor. I use a fairly expensive 48 volt 300 watt brushless 3000 RPM motor with HAL sensors and a 1 on 5 right angle planetary gearbox, but I enjoy it a lot. But it can also be a bit cheaper and also well working as John shows on his channel. And once you have a good usable DC motor, you will have to make the necessary adjustments to make it fit properly. However, if you choose the well-known NEMA 24 size with a matching 90 degree gearbox, then it will certainly fit without any problems. Thomas has created a beautiful 3D model of the bandsaw. It is a fantastic tool for anyone who wants to see how the machine is put together. With the free SolidWorks viewer, you can view the machine from all sides, and if necessary, take it completely apart to see exactly how it all fits together. I think it is great, Thomas. Let's look at some details of the construction using Thomas's 3D model. Here the chassis with one of its wheels and the adjustable axle. Not only can the saw blade be tensioned by rotating the two eccentric axles, but you can also tilt these axles with the help of the four set screws so that the saw blade is guided nicely in the middle of the edge of the wheel. This is a one-time adjustment. A set screw, a key and a washer with bolt are needed to connect the drive wheel rock solid to the axle of the gearbox. John Wright also noted this in his video, the space between the right bottom wheel, the saw blade guide, and the bottom of the cross guide is very limited. It would probably be better to make the holes for the mounting of the motor gearbox a few millimeters lower. Not too much, of course because then you won't be able to get the saw onto the wheels. The distance between the ball bearings of the saw band guide is such that the blade runs between the bearings, just touching both of them. With the help of the eccentric shafts, this is precisely adjustable. These shafts also make it possible to set the angle between the table and the band exactly at right angles by turning both shafts on both guides. The rear bearing is adjustable in order to also be able to support somewhat wider or narrower saw bands. The standard that has been assumed is 13 millimeters. The axles are turned by socket head cap screws, which are screwed and glued into the axles.
Two bronze bushings and a bronze ring provide the bearing for the M6 spindle of the fence, which is adjustable in maximum depth by means of two slotted holes. It goes without saying, that much attention must be paid to the squareness and straightness of the components. The table, the fence and the alignment guide must be made with great care. After the run of the saw band over the wheels has been adjusted once using the two tiltable axles on the left side, the third wheel attached to this tilter can be used to fine-tune a machine. The adjusting screw is secured with a small cross bolt under which there is a piece of plastic. No working drawings have been made of the hood, the switches, the tachometer, and the motor driver. Here is my solution with the dimensions I used. There is certainly something to improve on this housing. So also, take a look at John's solution, which uses some aluminium angle profile. Here are some of the beautiful working drawings that Thomas made of each part. All these drawings and the 3D model shown are free to request from me. This is the second set of drawings by Thomas, who previously made the beautiful set for the tiny tool grinder. I owe him a lot of thanks. Soon, there will also be a set of drawings for my third machine, the micro mill. These works of art are currently being made by Boris Malevich. If you want to give something back as a thank you for these drawings, make a donation to Warchild. The many children in the war zones need our support so badly. And that's it for this time. I hope to see you again next time. Until then.